Hi. Today we will learn in a simple way how intracranial hemorrhage happens. Let's go. Brain hemorrhage. It is a condition in which intracranial hemorrhage occurs when a blood vessel inside the skull ruptures or leaks, leading to a bleeding in the brain skull, and the bleeding is either in the brain tissue or the covering of the brain in the covering that protects the brain. The meninges are the membranes that surround the brain. The meninges consists of three layers that cover the brain and are called from outside to inside, dura mater, arachnoid mater, pia mater. Intracranial hemorrhage is a serious medical emergency because the accumulation of blood inside the skull can lead to high pressure inside the skull, which can crush sensitive brain tissue or limit blood supply to it. A severe rise in intracranial pressure may lead to a fatal cerebral herniation, in which portions of the brain are compressed through structures in the skull. Signs and Symptoms People with intracerebral bleeding have symptoms that correspond to the functions controlled by the area of the brain that is damaged by the bleed. Other symptoms include those that indicate a rise in intracranial pressure caused by a large mass putting pressure on the brain. A severe headache followed by vomiting is one of the more common symptoms of intracerebral hemorrhage. Collapsing is another symptom. Some people may experience continuous bleeding from the ear. Some patients may also go into a coma before the bleed is noticed. Intracranial hemorrhage occurs when a blood vessel inside the skull ruptures or leaks. This may occur from physical trauma, as in head injuries, or from non-traumatic conditions, as in hemorrhagic stroke, such as ruptured aneurysms. Risk factors for ICH include, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, menopause, excessive alcohol consumption, severe migraine, cigarette smoking may be a risk factor but the association is weak, diagnosis to check it all out. That's why doctors do a CT scan or an MRI, and when the doctors see what part of the bleeding and how much bleeding, treatment begins after that. Treatment treatment depends substantially on the type of ICH. Rapid CT scan and other diagnostic measures are used to determine proper treatment, which may include both medication and surgery. Surgery surgery is required if the hematoma is greater than 3 cm. If there is a structural vascular lesion or lower hemorrhage in a young patient. A catheter may be passed into the brain vasculature to close off or dilate blood vessels, avoiding invasive surgical procedures. A craniectomy may take place, where part of the skull is removed to allow a swelling brain room to expand without being squeezed. After treatment, if the patient has any physical problems such as difficulty walking and speaking, physical therapy is performed. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to Smart Doctor.